Hey! Today, I would like to do the first video in a series of videos I'm planning on advanced Linux sound architecture, also. This one is just going to focus on some of the basic introductory setup aspects. Let's get started. So first, why ALSA? Well, it's basically universal on Linux. It's also very stable. Also, compared to some of the alternatives, I'm thinking about Pulse Audio and Jack specifically, I find it easier to set up and use. It's well documented, and there are a lot of great examples. We have the C library reference here, which is very helpful. We have a lot of great examples, and I'm planning on talking about some of these in later videos. There are also some really great projects out there. The one that immediately comes to mind is FaceX. And this is something else I plan to look at more in future videos. Basically, realizing that it might be necessary to talk about Jack or Pulse Audio in the future, there are many options for ALSA projects and I'm interested in focusing on ALSA for now. In terms of packages that we need to install on Arch Linux, realizing that these might already be installed on your system, the first one would be GCC. We'll also need ALSA libs, ALSA utils, and ALSA plugins, and the Arch wiki is very helpful in getting everything installed. In terms of packages, we end up with Aplay and Amixer, which are both great, and I will be using both later on in this video. Next, for some simple introductory sample code, I would like to look at Introduction to Sound Programming with ALSA, written by Jeff Tranter in 2004. The example I would like to work with is Tranter's simple sound playback. This example reads from input and writes to the default PCM device for 5 seconds of data. This program is very basic, but I think it's also very useful for getting set up and running with ALSA programming. There are also lots of comments, which is always great. I have send PCM HW params T highlighted in order to demonstrate how to use the C library reference. When I am unsure of what something is or does, I can actually look it up and get some additional information. In terms of the source code for this example, it will be necessary to get a copy on the system. I don't recommend copying and pasting code directly from the internet, plus it always helps me to actually type it out. On my system I was able to compile the code with no issues, but every system is a bit different. The Arch wiki and Stack Overflow can be invaluable for basic troubleshooting. One issue that I have run into quite often is routing, and one thing I want to check is open PCM device for playback. The initial setting in the original code is default, and that's aiming at the default PCM device. But, depending on setup, I might need to change this prior to compiling, or I might not get any audible output. Aplay is a really helpful tool, and Aplay-L can be used to print a list of devices to the console. In my case, default works great, but if I wanted to use a different device I could enter that device in place of default. One thing to keep in mind is that, even if the device is not set up for output, if I tell the program to send there, it will. As this could potentially damage some devices, it is important to be careful when making this setting. Another thing I want to cover is naming conventions. In this case, it is plug hw, colon device number, comma subdevice number. So plug hw0 is 0 would be aiming at my first device and first subdevice. If I change device to 1, I'm now aiming at my second device, which would be my headset. If I change device to 2, I would be aiming at my audio interface. But the default setting is fine for me. So next, let's compile it. The compile command is very easy. GCC program name.c minus o program name without dot c then minus la sound to link also. If I forget la sound, it will throw a bunch of errors. Then, we need to run it period, or dot, forward slash, simple playback, which is our compiled program name. The problem is we need some kind of input. Tranter recommends sending slash dev slash urandom. This just sends random data to the program and it will output some noisy static. It might be really loud, so prior to running I am going to adjust levels with also mixer to prevent damaging my ears or speakers, and arrow keys will allow me to adjust the setting. 
Next, I'm going to run the program. It's going to play about 5 seconds worth of white noise. So just be aware you might want to mute volume, switch to speakers, or take your headphones off for this next part. Okay. So everything was set up correctly, and I was able to output 5 seconds of white noise. Realizing that this is a very basic program, I think it's helpful in getting things set up and working with a limited number of variables for the first program. In the next video, I hope to enhance this example a little bit and actually get closer to something more interesting. Thank you.